I apologize for the video quality on this trip from Loch Ness to Oban. The experiment was using a handycam technology and it proved not to work quite as well as I'd actually hoped. Also, we were traveling using public transport, so there's no opportunity to stop, reverse, and have a second take if things went wrong. The road between Inverness and Fort William was developed and constructed to the designs of Thomas Telford. He designed it to serve the more major project of his, at the time, the construction of the Caledonian Canal. Today, the road is far more significant as a connecting route than is the canal, which is almost entirely used for leisure traffic. The view from the coach is far better than you will get from the confines of a car, and of course you don't need to keep your eye on the traffic on this busy road. There are long stretches where trees and bushes are planted up high by the roadside, but the human brain is far cleverer than a handicap. You actually get uh, a much better impression of the scenery when you look at it in person. After Fort Augustus, the views open out a little more in the lush scenery around Loch Oich. The beginnings of the Western Highlands now come into view at Loch Lochy, and we can look up at the imposing mountains of Loch Abba beyond the Lagan Forest on the opposite side of the loch. The waters of the wide clear lock reflect the scenery above in dramatic style. For now, the mountains on our left hand side are too close to see properly, but soon the views here too open out and it becomes hard to know where to look for the most spectacular views as the Nevis range appears and disappears beyond the tightly planted pine forest to our south. All too soon we find ourselves at the foot of Ben Nevis itself, the highest peak in the British Isles, as we approach the town of Fort William and the western end of the Caledonian Canal. The rest of the journey along to Oban is alongside Loch Linney, a sea loch that opens out into the Sound of Mull and eventually the Irish Sea. We take a tea tour to enjoy the views of Loch Leven before travelling southwest along the south side of the loch. As we approach the coast, the land to the south becomes more agricultural, more gentle. But looking to the north, the views of the mountains of Argour are world-beating. Oban, a Gaelic word simply meaning bay, has been around for a very long time. Prehistoric remains have been found near the harbour, suggesting early settlement in the Iron Age. And we know from Priest's Rock, now known as Pulpit Hill, that there was a congregation to be preached to in the 6th century, when the monastery at Iona was founded. We also know from the ruins of nearby Dunolly Castle, that there was an early Irish, or more correctly, Dalriadic settlement here. And the people there fought off the Romans, who were in this area until around 410 AD. The town of Oban developed during the 18th and 19th century as one of Scotland's fishing ports. When the railway arrived around 1880, it coincided with the start of tourism, and Oban soon became a tourist destination because it was so easy to reach from Glasgow. There is no longer a fishing fleet based at Oban, but it is the port for a number of ferry services to the Western Isles and remains an important hub. Oban is a great location as a base for a family holiday, with the town geared towards entertaining visitors. There is plenty to do and see, great foods to eat, and ferry trips out from here to close by islands make for excellent days out. You just need a good guide.